Good morning everyone, welcome once again to our broadcast. Thank you very much for coming to join us this uh, morning. May the Lord bless you. And, uh, uh, what an exciting time this will be. Remember, uh, God has been in control, has covered us throughout this period. Let's give him praise, glory and honor. Uh, remember tomorrow here in Nigeria, the government is going to relax uh, some of the restrictions. Please uh, take care as you go out or those going out for businesses going out to do all sorts of transactions. Make sure that uh, you keep your social distancing, you cover your mouth and uh, your face with a face mask. Uh, make sure that uh, you are also you know, washing your hands. It uh, doesn't mean because they've relaxed these things uh, that uh, now we are back to our own ways and learn the new habits uh, and uh, you still stay safe. Uh, remember also uh, that we are still, the gatherings are not yet being allowed and we are waiting on Structure of the government of that, so we shall let you know uh, as soon as they do that or they begin to uh, give us the uh, liberty to gather again, uh, you shall be uh, informed of that. Okay, also remember that uh, giving is uh, important to this congregation. Our bills is a new month, uh, as we all are aware of. Uh, it's, it's, uh, you know, bills are still there. We still need to pay the light bills, we still need to buy diesel, we still need to do many, many other things. Uh, and please, uh, your giving is what keeps us going. And I appreciate everybody who's been giving. And uh, uh, may God bless you. And also continue giving so that we can be able to sustain uh, the house of God. Uh, apart from that, I remember on uh, uh, Tuesday and uh, Thursday, as long as the lockdown is uh, the church will not yet gathering, we shall continue in prayer. If anything changes, uh, we shall definitely let you know. Thank you for all of that. Uh, uh, let's move to the Word of God this morning. And uh, may God help everyone at this morning. Uh, let's turn our Bibles to the book of 2 Samuel. Chapter 19, verses 1 to 8 is the scripture I'm going to read from. It's a story of David and Absalom, his son. 2 Samuel, chapter 19, verses 1 to 8. And Joab was told, Behold, the king is weeping and mourning for Absalom. So the victory that day was turned into mourning for all the people. For the people heard it say that the, the king is grieved for his son. And the people stole back into the city that day as people who are ashamed still away when they flee in battle. But the king covered his face and the king cried out with a loud voice, O oh my son Absalom, O oh my son Absalom, my son, my son. Then Joab came into the house to the king and said, Today you have disgraced, disgraced all your servants who today have saved your life, the lives of your sons and daughters, the lives of your wives and the lives of your concubines, in that you love your enemies and hate your friends. For you have declared today that you regard neither princes nor servants, for today I perceive that if Absalom had lived and all of us had died today, then it would have pleased you well. Now therefore arise and go out and speak comfort to your servants. For I swear by the Lord, if you do not go out, not one will stay with you this night. And that will be worse for you than all the evil that have been, has befallen you from the day of your youth until now. Then the king arose and sat in the gate, and they told all the people, saying, There is the king sitting in the gate. So all the people came before the king, for everyone of Israel fled to his tent. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this morning once again, God, for gathering us together, God, in our households, to even God see this podcast. God, I give you glory and honor. Lord, as I reduce, you increase. Speak to every heart, every person that listened to this message. I thank you, God, for 
your word. Thank you, God, for your love. Thank you, God, for your covering and your protection. I give you glory and honor, my God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. There is an anonymous uh, quote that I read recently. And it says, if you drop gold and books, pick up the books first, then the gold. What that is saying is simply encouraging people that knowledge is better than gold. We are part of a very peculiar generation that no longer values learning and the benefits that come from that. We are driven by desire without much to look or much to back it up. But as we know, desire driven by ignorance only leads to a confused and chaotic identity. There are people out there full of energy, zeal, enthusiasm about their desire to be whatever they want to be, but have no clue or have no knowledge on how to go about it. They all end up being perched on a branch that has already broken off from the tree. In other words, they're sitting on dead ambitions. God's people have to crave knowledge. Hosea 4, 6 says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. Our generation is one of those where most people are just running back and forth without much knowledge. Thomas Carlyle, a Scottish historian and writer, said, My books are my friends, they never fail me. Knowledge is something that a Christian should be looking for all the time, especially godly knowledge. Learning is a permanent change in behavior that occurs as a result of practice and experience. You cannot have knowledge without learning. You have to learn things. And that's where the difficulty is with all of us. Yes, we know knowledge is powerful. Knowledge is power. There are all kinds of statements that are, that, you know, applaud knowledge. But the main thing is to get knowledge you have to learn. Learning is a permanent change in the behavior. Or learning causes permanent changes in the behavior. That, that occurs as a result of practice and experience. It can only be attributed to a person that they've learned something when you see a measure of change. If I look at a person's changed behavior, if I look at a person's change of view, I can tell you they've learned something. Well, in our generation, we see the opposite. We see people with information, but no relative change. People go to school. People come to churches, listen to sermons, surf the internet. But they do not learn. That's not a very unusual character of this generation. There is no evidence of change whatsoever because if you are learning, the evidence of learning is change. You can preach to many people in the church and you will notice who is learning by the changes and adjustments they begin to make in their lives? You can notice those who are not learning that they are coming, they are frequenting the, 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 the attendance, but no 
changes are occurring in their life. Because learning is the only path that leads you to knowledge. David is an outstanding man in the Bible. David is one of my favorite characters of the Bible. Man that God used so much. Man with so much, if you study David, uh, he's an exciting individual. But one of his greatest attributes is the ability to learn. And when I talk about the ability to learn is that you can always see in David throughout his life when he learned something it was attributed to the change that came after that. We learn through many mediums but one of the most used by God is experiences. And this sermon is going to be based mainly on learning from your experiences. Our text is one of the trying times of the life of David. His third son, Absalom, had done a coup d'etat on him and forced him out into exile. After playing political witness and a battle with Absalom, David comes up victorious. Absalom is killed by Joab, by David's general. And we catch our text at the time when now David has just gotten the information that Absalom is dead. And David's reaction is completely out of sync with his supporters. He cries for Absalom and wishes he had died in the place of Absalom. 2 Samuel 18, 33. Then the king was deeply moved and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. He said thus, O oh my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, if only I had died in your place, O oh Absalom, my son, my son. The people are hearing him in this room, in this chamber above the gate, and they can hear him crying for Absalom. This is evidence of a man who had not learned throughout this escapade with Absalom. His own son had come to challenge him, even kicked him out of Jerusalem. If Absalom was given a chance to kill David, he would have taken it. But we find in this moment the scriptures are narrating to us a story whereby David is crying over Absalom. Yes, definitely it's his son. I can understand the hurt and the pain. I can understand the being a father that he has lost his son. He had lost Amnon, his firstborn, to Absalom. Absalom killed him. And now Absalom is dead and David is crying at this moment. But at this moment, this was a wrong reaction from this experience. David had missed the lesson of this experience. Every one of us are capable and all of us have missed the lesson of certain experiences God has let us go through. You see, God teaches lessons. God is a teacher. Jesus was a rabbi, a teacher. That's our Lord. And every teacher comes with lessons. He was a teacher. Giving out lessons that we should be able to learn from them and gain knowledge and have change. God knows that the only way a human being can change is if they learn. But David in this instance misses the lesson. In this whole experience he came out feeling more remorseful for his son Absalom and missed the whole lesson. 
The people I'm talking to you right now, you are missing the lesson in the experiences you're going through. You are missing what God is trying to teach you. You are missing what God is saying. God is saying things to you. He's explaining things through your experiences. Instead of like David here, he misses his crying out, Absalom, Absalom, my son, my son. When the whole experience was to teach David another lesson. Christians, what are you learning from the experiences God is allowing to happen on your life? This is true also for all of us that we are constantly learning or not doing the right thing from the lesson or not giving the right reaction from the lessons that God is teaching. Every experience is a providence of information and knowledge. But it's up to every person to develop it, to become a tool for change in your life. Let me ref redo that statement for you. Every experience is a providence of information and knowledge. But it's up to every person to develop it to become the tool for change in your life. Interesting in the whole Bible is that God just provides information and knowledge about life, about eternity, about himself, about how he views the world. And he lives it like that. You and I pick up the word of God and when we read the word of God, God expects us to develop that information to bring change into our lives. In other words, learn. David in this instance failed completely to develop the information from this experience correctly. He's crying out for Absalom, Absalom. And he misses the whole lesson. 2 Samuel 19 2 tells us now what David, he's crying for, some, for, for, his, for his son Absalom. But here is the other side that he missed in all this. He says, So the victory that there was turned into mourning for all the people. For the people heard it say that day, the king is grieved for his son, and the people stole back into the city that day, as people who are ashamed steal away when they flee in battle. Listen, these people are defeated, Absalom. These people have showed loyalty to David. But him, in that moment, David's lesson in this experience was to know who was on his side, who was loyal to him. God orchestrated this to happen through that David should not have said that those closest to you can betray you, which happened to be Absalom. There are many people here that when David was going through this process, uh, abandoned him. He was supposed to learn who is on his side and who is not, who is still leaning on David and his leadership and those who are left him. There are people like Ahithophel. They left David. Shimei left David. Many other people abandoned David and his camp to join with Absalom. This whole experience was to bring to surface the enemies of David, the people that were going to assault him one day down the road. David misses all this and he's crying out. He's not learning the lesson. And this is my point to most people. You are not learning the lesson in the experience of your life. I see people react to events in their lives every day. God will make you go through an experience. Some experiences are harder than others. Some experiences are more difficult than others. But the issue is that most people come out perched on the wrong branch or on the dead branches of the tree of life. 
Some people, the lessons, they begin to ignore the lessons of the experience. Others, they are attaching emotional and mental complexes onto the issue. Others are finding blame in this experience. Joab's interception is critical. Because Joab brings back to perspective the lesson of God. When Joab heard about the king's reaction, he approached him and showed him the lesson of this experience with Absalom. See, this whole event was to distinguish who was loyal to David. David would have never known people like Shimei, Ahithophel, Ahimaaz, Hushai, and Absalom's loyalty unless this experience happened. I'm looking at people right now in your lives. The experiences God is making you go through. Are you learning the lesson he's teaching? This COVID-19, the lockdown, have you learned the lessons of what God is trying to teach you? Because most of us who come out of this experience crying out, Absalom, Absalom, when you should have learned something that God is teaching right now. The world will go back to the way we used to do things and never learn the lesson. There are many lessons in this COVID-19 lockdowns all over the world. But also, personally, are you learning the experiences you're going through? You know, there are lessons in being broke. There are lessons in having money. There are lessons in being alone. There are lessons in being in a relationship. And in all these things, are you learning? That's my question this morning. Because some of us, we are coming out, Absalom, Absalom, my son. And you're missing the point. The interception of Joab is very precise. For David to become an effective leader in his latter days, in his old age, he needed to know who was on his side and who wasn't. Matthew 12, 30 says, He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters abroad. You have to know in life who is for you and who is against you. But how are you going to know that except God takes you through a lesson by experience? There are people at work. It can be in your family. It can be in the, uh, you know, uh, your career, your, 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 your profession. That God is making you go through certain things so that you can know who is for you and who is against you. All experiences are lessons from God. But the question that always will be here is are you learning from those experiences? What impresses me about David in this time and what I love about David his ability to learn. I want you to picture this in your mind. David is there and he has, uh, you know, he's crying, my son, Absalom. Everybody, the people are walking back, you know, uh, not knowing what, if the king has really lost it or is in charge or what's going to happen next. And Joab approaches him. The words of Joab are not very kind. Joab slams the king. But what impresses me is David. Because we shall see him change. And learning will always be evidenced by change. I can tell a person who's learning but the corresponding change that I see. Second Samuel 19 verses 8. Then the king arose and sat in the gate. And they told all the people saying, There is the king sitting in the gate. So all the people came before the king. For 
everyone of Israel had fled to his death. Remember the people fled. When they heard the king, David changes from crying to sitting down at the gate. A place of authority, a place that signifies he's in charge. The king is there. You can rely on him. And the people come back. And how did he change? He learned a lesson that joy had brought to perspective again. He learned the lesson that God was teaching him there. You can read there when, you know, Joab rebukes him. Then Joab came into the house of the king and said, Today you have disgraced all your servants who today have saved your life, the lives of your sons and your daughters, the lives of your wives and the lives of your concubines, in that you love your enemies and hate your friends. For you have declared today that you regard neither princes nor servants. For today I perceive that if Absalom had lived, all of us have died today, then it would have pleased you well. Look at that, that's a difficult statement to take from a subject. But David, when he heard that, that moment, he said, oh, that's the lesson God is trying to teach me. To show me who is with me and who is against me. Now I know those who went with Absalom. And Absalom, the experience of Absalom was a lesson from God. And you see him sitting at the gate. You see, if you learn from your experiences, you will advance on to greater heights with God. David will learn from this. And we shall never hear of turmoil in this kingdom again till the day he dies. Because this was a critical lesson for David. I can tell you he adjusted his politics. Definitely he knew who was on his side and who was not. And that's the lesson some of us need to learn today. Who is for you and who is against you? Who is gathering with you and who is scattering? David changed behavior. From crying and demoralizing the people to sitting at the gate and encouraging them. By that change, I can tell you, he learned something. Same for you when you see change in yourself. You see, there's no point today like this generation of gathering information that you're not learning from it. And when I'm talking learning once again, let me reiterate my point, I'm talking information that changes you. Changes your behavior. There's no point coming to a church and listening to sermon after sermon when nothing has changed, which means you're not learning. I close with the last thought. Here. You have to learn to train yourself. Training is a planned and systematic developing of information that leads to change. You have to learn to, to, to train yourself to learn. David was trained in this by taking advice over the years. You can remember David with Saul, how he reacted. It was advice from Jonathan in the, in the cave and in all of his life. You find that David was well trained in listening to advice. There are people here that you are listening to me right now. You don't listen to everybody. And that's the problem of why you are constantly not learning. Learning is the art of taking knowledge from somewhere else, putting it in the context, or systemizing it into your context, and bringing change into your life. You want change? You want to see your life advance to greater heights? To greater levels of experiences with God, you have to train yourself to learn. You have to learn from others. There are people that nobody can tell you anything. What you think you know, you will see what it is, and that's the demise. Advice comes in different ways and shapes and sizes. When I hear 
Joab speak to David, it's a bit frustrating because he's a bit too aggressive. But David did not resist it because for years he had learned that advice is another perspective. It's a lesson. Advice is usually a lesson that you are missing. A lesson that you have not put into consideration. It is another real perspective of what's going on. I heard a story of, an, uh, uh, of uh, aeronautical engineers who were designing a new fighter jet. And uh, in this company they are making designs and they, they, they come up with the final you know, uh, prototype but uh, as this plane would fly and it gets to certain altitude. To make certain maneuvers, it would not do it. And they would come back, the engine would blow up because of the thrust and the lifts it had to do. The engineers would sit back, make you know changes to this, try it again and over and over again and it wouldn't just do those maneuvers. Time was coming up short when they were needed to go out and you know, display this uh, plane to the military officials so that they can buy it. And one day they sat in the place where they were designing these are uh, uh, highly educated aeronautical engineers and they were sitting down there and uh, a janitor was just by, he used to clean where they worked and he's cleaning and in a comical fashion uh, one of them said, hey, they called out his name and said, listen, uh, what do you think we should do to this uh, plane to make it do what, we, what it's supposed to do or what we want it to do? And after the jest, you know, the, the janitor laughed it off. And he made a simple comment. He says, you know what? Uh, the other time, uh, the company brought in some new vacuum cleaners. These vacuum cleaners were hard to push. And so what I did is that I went and I drew the hole here and the hole there so that air can be, and I pushed it today. I'm the only one who's able to finish working quickly with this because my vacuum cleaner has these holes. Well, the engineers laughed it off, giggled for a few seconds, but the, the suggestion began to make sense. So what they did, they went on this, uh, on this jet and they made provisions for air tunnels that were these air things and they tried the, the aeroplane, it maneuvered superbly. They were able to get the contract. And the story, the moral of the story is that the advice came from somebody you didn't expect. These are highly educated people. These are people who give other people advice. But they were able to take advice from a janitor. You see, most of us, that's where we miss it. You see, if you were in David's position that day, you would have probably rebuked Job and said, Job, you're talking to me like that? I lost my son, we shall play emotions on that. Uh, this is what I know, absolutely my problems, but you're still my son. You can go about it and you miss the lesson. There's another story I heard, it's a comical one also. There was a madman, a man, you know, walking who sleeps in the streets, it's quite crazy. And uh, one day he saw a car coming and uh, the wheel fell off, one of the wheels came off, uh, the car parked uh, on the side and uh, right there uh, a professor came out of the car. And uh, he started, uh, you know, he picked up his wheel but he could not find the nuts because the nuts had been, you know, and so what happened next was that this man, uh, you know, uh, the professor started looking where he had passed in that place, looking for where probably the nut had fallen. This crazy madman was sitting down watching this professor for quite some time. And uh, finally he got up and said, sir, what are you looking for? And the professor said, looked at him and says, Phew. But for the sake of justice, he says, listen, my, my wheel came off. I'm looking for the nuts, the wheel nuts to, to tie it back so that, but I'm looking at where I passed, probably one or two fell. Well, the madman said, uh, excuse me, sir, but you can see that on the remaining three tires, there, is, uh, uh, there are four nuts on each wheel. Why don't you remove one, 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 you have three on each, and you can move where you go. And the professor said, oh, this man makes sense. And he did that and went on his journey. This is true for all of us, learning from the experiences. Some experiences don't look like they have much in them. 
But you have to learn. You see, if you develop this attitude of learning, you train yourself to listen, to see the Spirit of God in every event of your life, you shall advance on. David advanced on to stay king till his death, of which it would have been cut short by Absalom. But you see, he learned. Christianity is about learning all the time. Church is about learning. Preaching is about learning. And if you're not catching the lessons, you're not learning. I'm worried about your destiny if you reach it. Because God, from what I read in the scriptures, if you're not learning from his lessons, he will not advance you. Your advancement in the kingdom of God is learning the lessons he is teaching you through your experience. Right now, open your heart and analyze the experiences you are having with God. It could be like Absalom. It could be many other things that you're going through. It could be hunger right now. It could be difficult financial situation. It could be a, a, a very, a, you know, a peculiar relationship. But are you learning what God is teaching? Because in every experience, there's a lesson from God. I want every head bowed, every eye closed. This morning, you are here, you are listening at the sound of my voice, you are watching this broadcast, you are not saved, you are not born again, you are not giving your life to Jesus. God sent His one and only begotten Son to die for you, so that you can have salvation. If you are not saved, you are not born again, just where you are, you know you are living a life of sin. You know you are away from God. If today had to be the day that Jesus returns, and the rapture happens, you will not go with God. But God gives you a chance. And the chance is that you can come to Him through His Son, Jesus Christ. All you have to do right now is where you are, bow your knees, heads are bowed, eyes are closed. But just where you are, repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I've sinned against you. I've done the wrong. I've offended you. But Lord, I ask you to come into my heart. Change me. I believed. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you rose the third day so that I can have salvation and communion with God. Lord Jesus, be my Lord and my Savior. I thank you, God, for salvation. I thank you for saving me this morning, God. Help me to live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Pray that prayer, you just become born again. You need to put your mind into reading the Word of God. Find a Bible preaching church. We are the Potter's House here in Festa Town, Lagos, Nigeria, 301 Road. Come and join us. Also, find new friends, new Bible believing Christians. They will help you to live for God. Those three things, you will make it. For the rest of us, those who, let's just where you are, find some time to pray. Pray that you learn, that God gives you an ability to learn His lessons. As He's taking through experiences, learn from them right now. Ask God, God is able. He's able. Just say, God, let me learn. What, is the, what are the lessons you're teaching me? What am I, what am I supposed to learn? Let me become like David with an ability to learn that from my mistakes, from my successes, from failure. Let me learn. I thank you for joining us as you continue to pray. This broadcast, the broadcast is coming to an end. May God bless you. See you in the evenings. Thank you.